Hi, welcome to Tech Ranch, a place where we learn and earn technical skills in the most efficient way. Let's make coding fun. Today we would like to introduce our new course, JSP, Java Server Pages. In this course, we are going to learn about JSP in detail. We'll start with introduction. We have JSP directives, script elements, custom tag, Java beans, file uploading, form processing, and many more. So let's start with chapter one, JSP introduction. In this session, we are going to discuss what is JSP, what is HTML, JSP architecture, JSP lifecycle, demonstration, and homework for practice project. Now let's start with what is JSP. Java Server Pages is a server-side programming technology that enables the creation of dynamic platform independent method for building web-based applications. JSP have access to the entire family of JS Java APIs including the JDBC API to access enterprise database and many more libraries. In simple words, we can say Java plus HTML equals to JS. Now, next question is what is HTML? HTML is a hypertext markup language. To start with JSP, we need to know a little bit about HTML. So HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. This describes the structure of web pages using markup. And it has some elements that are building blocks of HTML pages and elements are represented by tags. So it's nothing but providing a structure in your front page or web page and uh, give you a uh, form to provide the data from the server whenever it requests to getting the request to getting the response we display it in a some kind of a user interface that will give you html so it's something like you have a data all you need to present it in a presentation logic with the help of html so java is written in html embedded in html and make it in a jsp form so this is about the HTML. Now let's see what is JSP in detail. So JSP is a technology for developing web pages that supports dynamic content. This helps developer insert Java code in HTML pages by making use of spatial JSP tags, most of which start with some script language and we can use some HTML tags too. Now when, when we say about JSP architecture, JSP architecture contains the same kind of blocks we have learned in the servlet like we have a client which is of different operating system and different characteristics they go through the internet and pass getting and creating the request and getting the response from the web container the request goes to the web container where the all JSP files and servlet files contain and stored there they process the request and further process the if it is required to contact the database they will use the JDBC API and further process to the database connected to the database and access the data and getting the response from it and provide the response to the client. This is the typical process we have learned in the servlet. Now what is the difference in JSP? To understand the difference from servlet and JSP is the life cycle method if you see as you can see here the request started and goes through the JSP engine first and that JSP engine will segregate your code from HTML to Java and that particular Java will further go to the servlet and then servlet will process the process the request and further do the execution and then provide the response to the client. Now to understand it better in detail, you can take a look in the life cycle for the JS. Number one is called translate. So as you can see in this picture, when the client created the request, it goes to the JSP engine. Basically your JSP is going to be converted into the servlet and then from servlet it follow the same process what it has to be in the servlet 
life cycle. So this is what actually an extra step we do in the JSP process. So this comes like a translation where the JSP request converted into the servlet. So first step is the translation. Second step is your compilation. So once your translation is done, when the browser asks for a JSP, the JSP engine first checks to see whether it needs to compile the page. If the page has never been compiled or if the JSP has been modified since it was last compiled, the JSP engine compiles the page. So it will parse the JSP, turn the JSP into servlet and compile the servlet. Now the servlet is it in a class form. So next step will be your class loading. Once the compilation is done, the class file will further process to convert it into the bytecode. Now, after the loading the class, after the loading the bytecode, next step will be your instantiation. So, creating an instance of that particular request is your next step. So, once the instance is created, the next will be your initialization. So far, till your instantiation is the extra steps you do it in your JSP processing. This is called JSP to servlet conversion. So once the servlet is created, you created the instance. Now from here, you're going to initialize the instance. So that is your JSP init, like the servers, servlet has the init method. So JSP init, initialize your instance. Request processing will provide your implement your JSP service method and then in the end we'll have destroy. So this is how your JSP lifecycle goes. Here all these steps are internally processed. So programmer doesn't need to program all these steps. All you need to just make the JSP and invoke it and deploy it in your server. This is what the automatic deploy, automatic compiled translation, instantiation, initialization, request processing and destroy. All these steps are internally automatically processed by the GSP engine. So let's see the demonstration of this application. I have created a small hello world application for your reference. So in this application, we are going to have three files, major file in is web.xml which contains the link from one page to another page. So this is what the deployment descriptor we know about the web application API that it helps to link the process of the flow of a web application request and risk getting the response. So this flow starts from web.xml where we are going to define welcome file list with a page name where to start and it goes to the welcome.jsp. In the welcome.jsp, we are going to enter the username and once the submit is done, the home.jsp will display the name with the message. So this is your hello world demonstration. Let's see the execute. So this is my Eclipse IDE and uh, here is my hello world JSP demo. And here you can see I have created your web.xml where I have mentioned welcome file list and welcome.jsp. I have two JSPs, home.jsp and welcome.jsp. These three are the major files. I'm going to deploy it in this demonstration and show you the example how it works. Now, as you can see, this is the HTML code where we have html and head and meta and title and head closed and body this is the structure of the html this piece of code is written in java so this is called javascript we'll learn it in detail when we actually work and understand how it works now in this within this code we can write down any java code so this is what html embed with java now next is uh, this is the mess in HTML tags and HTML tags again. HTML tag helps to link your code to the Java or any other further uh, web component to link it with. So I have made it in a 
home.jsp and mentioning as a post method so what you see here the jsp is further going to convert it into the sublet so we have to follow the same process so passing the values from one page to another you have to use any specific method get or post every time whether it is jsp or servlet now similarly just sending the text username value to the next page and then submit in the home.jsp i'm getting the value username and printing the value username with the message now let's see the deployment so as you can see in the console it's running all uh, you need to make sure you configure your web server in your so this is my page you can see welcome to techrank jsp demo and here i'm going to write down the username and this is the execution displaying the message so all you need to do is make sure you have your web.xml where you're mentioning your welcome file list to start the flow when the pointer from welcome.jsp goes to web.xml from web.xml the pointer will go to web.welcome.jsp and from there pointer will go to the home.jsp and from home.jsp it will display the values so whenever you make any changes and you save it it will compile it again but the after the compilation you need to load the instance of that particular servlet so for that we need to deploy your application every time so sometimes you see like you're changing it and you're trying it to refresh it it will not work every time you have to deploy every time you make any changes you have to save the file and you have to stop the server and deploy the application once again this is the way you can stop the server and suppose i need to make any changes in my home i can do it here like this so whenever you make any changes you have to first save the file and stop the server and deploy it it again you see so this is the execution of jsp this important facts about jsp as we discussed jsp is a server side programming technology jsp equals java plus html it's a dynamic platform independent method for building web based application it supports two type web architecture means it combines your presentation and the business logic together to make the application fast and efficient some applications require these kind of architecture where they need to simply include your presentation logic and the business logic together so this is all about the jsp now let's take a now it's homework time so what do we what we can do today we have onlinefloris.com here all you need to make a welcome page just the way we did instruction we need to make a java based web application the dynamic web application name onlinefloris.com where end user enter the name and get the welcome message in the next page just like we did for more assistance you can reach us on twitterrange2019@gmail.com and uh, later in this application we are going to make changes and learn more in detail along with jsp so stay tuned and next chapter we are going to learn about jsp directives in detail so stay tuned and please subscribe to our channel thank you so much for watching this video and uh, please subscribe to our channel 
stay tuned let's make coding fun thank you